Okay, this is part of a series. Before I check out, be sure to check out the annotation on the screen for the full playlist. I recommend watching the previous videos because we're already moving along here. I'm already logged into my uh, Cancun Smart Plug through SSH. Uh, and so far we've been accessing it as if it was its own wireless access point, its own network. But we need to get it hooked to our, our wireless uh, routers so that we can access it from a computer or really anywhere in the world if we wanted to, rather than having to disconnect from our network and connect directly to it. So the way you do this, I have some notes right here that I got from a website, which there'll be links to the credits and these notes in the description of this video. Um, so first thing we need to do is look, we need to look for this file. Etsy config wireless. So you would just vim that file. I'm not going to go into it because within it in plain text is my WPA uh, key. Um, but basically when you go in there, there's going to be some things and there's going to be a section called config Wi-Fi iFace interface. So you're configuring the Wi-Fi interface here. And by default, it's going to look like this. And that's set up so that you can access it as an access point. So what you're going to do is you're going to delete all that and you're going to change it and replace it with this information, which again, check out the link in the description. You can copy and paste that in there. And then with this, you're going to change two things. You're going to change where it says SSID to be the name of your network. So if your network's called Linksys, you're going to put Linksys in there. If your network's called Bob's house, you're going to change it to say Bob's house. Whatever you see when you go to connect to your wireless network from your tablet, laptop, or phone, you'll put that in there. And then you'll also put your WPA uh, key in here. Uh, at this point, you save that file uh, by hitting, if you're using Vim, control, or sorry, escape, uh, colon, WQ, and hit enter. And um, then we need to go into another file, which we will actually go into here. And so Vim Etsy config network. So in here, uh, you'll have all this already in there. And what we're adding is these last two lines. So this is telling the, the smart plug, which is a computer at time of boot, start up these networks, the loopbat network. I don't really know what the global network is and a LAN network. There's no physical LAN plug you can see on this thing, but it appears that there is a um, ethernet chip on it. Uh, I guess theoretically you could crack it open and probably solder a physical connection on there. Uh, but there is a chip in there because it is showing up with IF config. And then here we're saying, okay, at start, start up this interface, WWAN, the wireless network. And we're just going to put option proto protocol uh, DHCP. This is saying, okay, when you boot, start up this interface and use DHCP, which means ask the router uh, that you're connecting to for IP addresses. So you can do that. You can also do something if you look at the example up here for the, the Ethernet plug, you can set yourself some static uh, IP address. So instead of DHCP, you can say static and then assign yourself IP addresses. Because uh, you are going to want a static IP address, but I choose to do DHCP on this device. And then my router actually has an option called reservations, DHCP reservations, where I can say, okay, anytime a device with this MAC address connects to the network, assign it this IP address. And I just chose to do that uh, this time uh, with this device. So either way, you can either set static devices down here or you can go into your router. Even if you do DHCP, most routers will assign the same IP address to uh, a certain device every time it connects. Although if you don't tell it to do that specifically, it may occasionally change and then you'd be like, oh, I have to search for the device again. Anyway, so we're saying turn on this device at boot time and uh, then use the protocol DHCP to get an IP address. And then it's also gonna look at the other file there for other settings that we already set. At this point, escape, colon, WQ, enter. So we saved and quit out of it. And now at this point, uh, you would restart your device. So we could type in reboot. And I could do that because I've already done this on my device. And um, if I have config, you can see not only uh, do we have here, this is uh, the bridge land, the, we got the ethernet, we got the loop back, and then we have our WLAN zero and it's been assigned an IP address. So now I can take that IP address, go into my browser, type it in, 
and it will bring me to the index, which I've added stuff here that we're going to look at in the next tutorial, but that is how you connect to the network. Now, after making those changes, you restart the device, um, and let's say it does not connect to your wireless network. What do you do at that point? Well, if you watched the last video on troubleshooting, hold down that power switch on the, on the plug itself for five seconds or so, let go, and it'll factory reset it. We'll take about 20 seconds or so to reboot, and then you can connect to it as an access point again and try again. So you don't have to worry too much about screwing this up, really at all, with what we're doing here, because you can always factory reset it. Um, if you keep trying and it's not connecting, then you're either typing something wrong or there's something wrong with your uh, settings on your wireless network. Um, but no need to fear about screwing up the device, because you can always factory reset and connect to it as an access device. But hopefully, once it reboots, it'll connect to your wireless uh, network. You can scan for the IP that it's at and then connect to it just like we have been, either through the web browser or through the SSH connection. Next video we're going to look at, we're going to take uh, a look at making a nicer web interface. We've already played around with that a little bit, but to make something that's nice for a touch screen so you can turn the light on and off with ease or whatever you have cooked at the plug. Uh, you can turn it on and off with ease with a tablet or phone just by clicking a button. So I hope you're enjoying these tutorials on the, the smart plug. Again, for $15 to $20, it is a great little device. Um, and it, like I said, even it has a pretty full version of BusyBox on here with pretty much all the tools you would need. And um, it's just, like I said, I'm loving it. A lot better than some ARM devices that are a bit more limited uh, out of the box. So, thanks for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There should be a link in the description. Also, links to the notes and scripts that I'm using in these tutorials. So, you can go to that link on GitHub and get all the information that we've gone over in this tutorial and previous tutorials. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.